Hey everybody, we are going to do the unit 7.2 lesson three practice in our Desmos course books. Uh, let's start with the warm up. It says circle all of the ratios that are equivalent to four colon seven. So I know that these ratios are equivalent if I can multiply or divide both sides of the ratio by any number to arrive at a four colon seven. So checking this first one with this eight, if I were to divide by two, I could get a four. But if I divide the other side by two, 15 divided by two is 7.5. So this doesn't give me a four colon seven ratio. This gives me a four colon 7.5. .5. So I'm not doing that. Um, I'm just gonna go straight over to this one and notice that seven colon four and four colon seven, those are not the same ratio. If, like they do have the same number, but you're changing this quantity to seven and this quantity to four. If you think of them as real life things like sugar and flour, um, making a recipe with four cups of sugar and seven cups of flour is not the same as seven cups of sugar and four cups of flour, right? That'd be very different. So let's not select that. Here, I will divide both sides by four. 16 divided by four is four and 28 divided by four is seven. So this one works. And lastly, over here, let's here I have a 20 on the left side. I wanna make that a four. So I'm gonna divide by five. So I know that gets me a four. So that means I have to do the same thing to the other side. If I divide that by five, 35 divided by five is seven. So this one also works. Okay, so the next part says, when Devin makes chocolate milk, he mixes two cups of milk with three tablespoons of chocolate syrup. Here's a table that shows how to make batches of different sizes. Are cups of milk and tablespoons of chocolate syrup in a proportional relationship? Explain how you know. So we would expect them to be in a proportional relationship. You wouldn't normally change a recipe so that the ratio between um, ingredients changes based on the batch sizes. There probably are some cases like that in the world, but most of the time you would want that ratio to stay the same. So um, let's check though, by creating a third column on our table. And if we call this first column, all of the values in here are X values and all of the values in the second column are Y values, then this can be our Y divided by X column. And we'll do y divided by x for each row. And if all those numbers come out the same, then we do have a proportional relationship. If, those, if even one of those numbers comes out different, we do not. So three divided by two, I'm just gonna write that as the fraction three over two. 12 divided by eight, that's 12 eighths. But if I divide the top and bottom of this by four, I again get three over two. So, so far I have two ratios that are the same, both equal to three over two. The next one, I have three over two divided by one. Any number divided by one stays the same. So I have one more three over two. So as long as this last one's also equal to three over two, then we have a proportional relationship. So we have 15 divided by 10. I'll write that as 15 tenths and divide the top and bottom by five and I get a three on top and a two on the bottom. So yes, the relationship is proportional. And normally I would write what the K or the constant of proportionality is here, but I think they're gonna ask it for, ask for it down here anyway. So I'm gonna to skip to 1.3 real quick. It says, what is a constant of proportionality for this relationship? That's weird that they said A, it should be V. There's only one constant of proportionality. And it's gonna be K equals three over two. Where can you see the constant of proportionality in this table? Uh, so I'm gonna draw an arrow to right here. The K, is the amount of syrup for one cup of milk. 
And we also call this a unit rate. So anytime you have, if you have a proportional relationship and you have one for your X value, then whatever the value is in your Y column right there is gonna wind up being your constant of proportionality. Um, and it's also gonna be your unit rate. It's telling you how much of the, whatever the Y quantity is that you need for one of the X quantity. What is the scale factor from the first row to the second row in the table? So they're asking us, what do you need to multiply the batch from the first row by in order to scale it up to make the second row? Um, so you might've heard me or one of your other math teachers say in class that the unit rate, the scale factor and the constant of proportionality are all the same thing. That's definitely true, depending on how you look, look at things. They're asking us to think of the scale factor in a little bit different way. They want you to think of the scale factor as this number to go from a two milk, two cup milk um, recipe to an eight cups of milk recipe. And so we're scaling that recipe up by a factor of four, right? We need four times as much milk. And so that scale factor there is gonna be four. Complete the table so that each row makes the same shade of purple. In the last row, make up a new pair of numbers. Okay, so we wanna make sure that this table down here turns out proportional. So we just gotta make sure the ratios are all equivalent. Six divided by two, let's see, I'll do this over here. Six divided by two. So I'm thinking this is Y and this, this is X and I'm doing Y divided by X equals three. So my ratio, between blue and red is three, or in other words, I need three red for every one blue. And so one times three equals three. And then in the last row, as long as whatever numbers I choose, the blue times three equals the red, I'm good. So I could do like 10 and then over here it could be 30. I was gonna write times three, but I'm not even gonna do that. Just 10 and 30. Explain how you know they will make the same purple. The red is always three, it's supposed to be a three, three times the blue, right? So that relationship is staying constant. So it should always make the same color. And what is the constant of proportionality for this relationship? So K is gonna equal three. And it tells us uh, we need three red cups or three cups of red for every one, oops, realizing I'm not on the screen, for every one blue. All right, let's do the explore section on the back. Luckily, this explore section isn't as challenging as some of the other ones are sometimes. Complete the table below such that A and B represent a proportional relationship. So any, any values you want. So let's say I were to choose the constant of proportionality to be five. And the reason I choose five is because I know that that will make it really easy to work with this 10. So I'm gonna put it, uh, oh, well, okay, wait. Maybe they want us to go sequentially, right? I see zero one, half, two. You know what? I'm gonna put a five here actually instead. I'm gonna make my life easy, even easier. That's a five now. They don't have to go in order, right? Cause look, they didn't even go in order. They went one and then one half, so whatever. Well, I know that five times two equals 10 or 10 divided by five equals two, whichever way you like to think of it. So that's gonna make my constant of proportionality two. As long as all the A values times two equal the B values, then I'll have a proportional relationship. So zero times two is zero. In a proportional relationship, if you have zero on one side of the relationship, you pretty much automatically have to have zero. Not even pretty much, you have to have zero and zero together because zero times any K is always gonna equal zero. Okay, so one times two is two. One half times two is one. And two times two is four. Okay, so here's the same table from above. Use a different constant of proportionality to complete this table. Okay, um, I'm going to 
set this up so that it's relatively easy for you. And then I'm gonna ask you to finish it. Oh, wait, what is the constant of proportionality in this table? So K equals two here. So I'm gonna set this up relatively easily for you and let you figure it out at the end. I want you to put a 10 in this A box here. That should make it pretty obvious what this constant of proportionality is gonna be. It's gonna be pretty much the easiest one you could have. And then I want you to just multiply all those, these values by that constant of proportionality and write it here where it says, what is your constant? All right, that's it.